Do you need an ND filler for your Osmo Pocket? This is one of the questions that I've seen asked very often. And at the same time, you can discuss if it's worth the trouble and hassle dealing with filters with this kind of camera. Regardless, the physics is the same for this camera as with any other camera. So if you plan to capture smooth cinematic footage in the bright sunlight, the answer is definitely a yes. This tutorial will cover ND filters for your Osmo Pocket and clarify when and why you need them. In the end, I will show you an easy way to pick a filter to keep your footage properly exposed. And of course, I will include some sample footage to show you what it looks like. Before we get to that, let's roll that intro. If you're new around here, then consider subscribing to my weekly tips, tests and tutorials and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future updates. There seems to be a lot of misconceptions about ND fillers, when and why you need to use them. And to make matters even worse, there are also different kinds of ND fillers. Some of them are circular, some of them are graduated, polarized and even variable. Depending whether you're into video or photography, they're used differently. But uh, don't worry, it's not difficult. And by the end of this video, you'll be a filter expert for video. So let's jump right into the basics. What is a neutral density or ND filler? The sole purpose of an ND filler is to reduce the amount of light that goes through the lens. A pure ND filler does not improve your footage or change the colors. ND fillers are typically labeled with the ND number 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, etc. There's a longer explanation between the, the correlation between f-stop and nd in numbers, but you don't need to mess around with that. You just need to know that a higher number means a darker filter. For the Osmo Pocket, there are typically two types of filters, a standard nd filter and a polarized version. Before we talk about the difference, let's start by understanding why we need them. Why do we need a nd filter for video? nd fillers are used to generate motion blur in your footage, making motions more pleasant to the eye. We're used to seeing motion blur from the movies, so this is by the human eye perceived natural. To obtain motion blur, we need to obey the 180 degree rule, where we slow down the shutter to the double of the frame rate. As an example, if you're shooting 30 FPS, your shutter needs to be 60 or 1 over 60. If the term shutter speed is new to you, this is the length of time that the sensor inside the camera is exposed to light. If you use a higher shutter speed, your footage will look sharp, jerky and unnatural. With motion blur, your footage will be smooth and look a lot more cinematic. When do you need an ND filter? When you're outside in the bright sunlight and you need to slow that shutter down to generate motion blur, your picture will end up overexposed. With a normal DSLR, you would close the aperture to uh, reduce the amount of light that hits the sensor to compensate for that. Aperture is the iris inside uh, the lens that either opens or closes depending on how much light you want to let in. For the Osmo Pocket, the aperture is fixed. When you're outside, ISO is normally set to the lowest value of 100. ISO is uh, the sensitivity of the image sensor and at the value of 100 it produces the best quality but also the darkest image. With both ISO and aperture fixed, shutter speed is the only remaining parameter we can adjust to get the exposure right. But we can't charge that because we need to keep the shutter speed at the double of the frame rate to generate motion blur. Our only remaining option is to add an ND filler to reduce the amount of light coming through the lens like a pair of sunglasses. Do I need to use ND fillers every time that I'm outside? The answer is no. ND fillers are primarily needed if there's motion in the picture. So if you're far away from moving objects or filming landscapes panning at low speed, you will not see much of a difference regardless of the shutter speed. When do you need polarized ND fillers? Polarized fillers are used in general to darken skies, manage reflections and suppress glares from surfaces like a pond or a lake. Polarized fillers can be used to enhance colors of vegetation. Because of reduced reflections, it makes the colors look saturated with increased contrast. If you're doing landscape footage, uh, glare and reflections might not be the most common problem. It can have the opposite effect and make a lake look like uh, it's uh, dead and uh, unnatural. Getting a nice blue sunny sky with the clouds sticking out, this is where polarized fillers really can help. You could basically say that you only need polarized ND fillers if you want to add an artistic effect in camera. The polarizing effect varies according to the position of the camera lens in relation to the sun. The highest polarization will be obtained when the camera is 90 degrees 
perpendicular to the sun. The polarizing effect can either be maximized or minimized by turning the outer ring on the filter. This could be the reason for selecting the polarized version if you don't want to buy both. How to mount ND fillers on your Osmo Pocket. In this example, we are using the Osmo Pocket together with the Freewell Daylight Kit. This kit comes with eight filters covering both polarized standard fillers as well as a circular polarizing filter. Opposed to the fillers that we have seen on drones, these are pretty snug fit on the Osmo Pocket with their magnetic attachment. You mount them by just positioning them in front of the lens and then they snap right into place because of the magnetic mount. The fillers are so small and light that they do not add any additional strain on the gimbal. You can leave the filter on during storage in the pouch that came with the Osmo Pocket. The kit from Freewell does only fit the Osmo Pocket, but Freewell does other affordable filter solutions for DJI drones, so you can check them out through the link in the description below. Prepare the Osmo Pocket camera settings. Remember the purpose of adding ND filters is to generate motion blur. So we need to prepare our camera settings in pro mode and switch the camera into manual. This can be done all through the unit itself if you have installed the latest firmware update. I found recording in 25 frames per second produce a very nice cinematic look. I know you would probably uh, prefer 24 if you live in the US. But anyway, this means that we should set the shutter to the double of the frame rate, so in this case 1 over 50, and the ISO is bumped down to 100. Remember to change the shutter speed if you decide to switch frame rate. So if you use 4K 60fps, you should use a shutter speed that is 1 over 120. Use the standard color profile or D-Cine like if you want to create your footage in post-production and set the white balance so it matches the scene. You want to keep away from auto as this can lead to variations in the white balance. How do you select the right filter for a given scene? Start by mounting the filter that matches the guideline from the package, fire up the Osmo Pocket and point it in the direction that you plan to film and check the exposure compensation value to determine if the exposure is correct. The EV value is the combination of uh, aperture, shutter and ISO and the value indicates in increments of one the changes that either doubles or halves the amount of light that uh, hits the sensor, also known as a stop. If you want to learn more, I actually made a video about the, the exposure triangle that will help you nail that exposure every time. You can find a link for that video in the description below. You should aim for EV value around 0 plus minus 0 0.7, but if you can't have it spot on, it's better to have a darker image than a lighter one for your post-production. Information can better be recovered from the dark areas than from the blown out highlights. If the scene is too dark, you should switch to a lighter filter with a lower ND value. If the scene is too bright, you need to mount a darker ND filter with a higher number. If you want to be 100% sure that your exposure is set correctly, you need to use the phone and enable the histogram from the settings along with the O-exposure warnings shown as zebra stripes in the interface. These tools will help you to see if your scene has been exposed correctly. The histogram is very useful as it shows a graphical representation of the pixels exposed in your view. The left side of the graph represents the blacks or the shadows, the right side represents the highlights or bright areas, and the middle section is the midtones. This is an easy way to determine if your picture is under or overexposed, as the chart will be pushed either to the left or the right side. An ideal histogram should be evenly distributed edge to edge and not squeezed to either side. There are of course exceptions, but this is the general approach. It's more cumbersome to do this, and in most cases uh, getting the exposure compensation value within 0 0.7 plus minus will produce a quite decent result and save you from the hassle with the phone. Now let's look at some test footage recorded with the polarized filters from Freeway.
on what you learned in this tutorial, you should now be able to make the right choice. And you're ready now to go out in the world and capture some great looking footage. If this tutorial sounded familiar to you, it's likely because you watched some of my earlier videos where I explain ND fillers for drones. Uh, if you want to watch some of them, or if you decide to pick up a filter kit for your Osmo Pocket from Freewell, you can find that information in the description below. I hope you liked this video and will consider subscribing to more weekly tips tested tutorials uh, if you are not already a subscriber. If you are, then I would be really happy if you would give the video a like, that would make it a lot easier for others to find the video as well if they need to benefit from this information. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.